Hello, how's it going? My name is Kathleen and I will be talking a little bit today about Traveller Pride and Traveller Culture and why it's so important to have Traveller Culture and History in schools. So as I said, my name is Kathleen. I am an Irish minker or traveller and I have a Bachelor of Civil Law degree from Minute and a Masters in Human Rights from UCD. Along with that, I have a lot of experience working in advocacy and human rights in all different aspects of my career. I have worked locally, regionally and nationally and even internationally fighting for human rights on behalf of travellers and Rome in Ireland. I also have my lived experience as a traveller as well. I am also doing my training with the PGCE online with Sunderland University. I'm doing independent distance learning, so I am hoping obviously to be a teacher myself. So I just want to preface this by saying as well that I cannot speak on behalf of all travellers in Ireland. I am only one person. Just remember that travellers are not a homogenous group so that we cannot be seen as just one identity. We are individuals and we have diversity even within our own group as well. So on to travellers ourselves. Travellers are an ethnic minority group. We were officially recognised on the 1st of March 2017 as an ethnic minority group in Ireland. It was not bestowed on us. It was something we already had. It was just the state finally came to acknowledge that we are an ethnic minority group. We share cultural traditions, language, a way of life, all of our own, while also identifying as Irish as well. So you might be wondering as well, what type of cultural traditions and way of life am I talking about? Well, one aspect of it is the fact that we used to be nomadic. A long time ago, travellers used to travel all across Ireland, living in wattle tents, uh, wagons and even mobiles as time moved in. Of course, different laws and stuff came into place that meant that travellers had to start to stay in put. So tr you can find travellers now in all different types of homes. You can find travellers in mobiles, in apartments, in houses. Uh, some travellers even own their own land. So another aspect of our culture is our language. We have our own language, it's called gammon or cant or even chelt to some people. And while we don't really speak it anymore, it is something that we try and hold on to. And some travellers like myself are trying to reclaim our language and learn it ourselves so that we can teach it to our own future children. So along with these, we also have storytelling, we have music, we have crafts. Years ago, uh, a lot of travel women would have sold paper flowers or penny flowers. I also have a video of that on my Instagram as well if you want to check it out. There's also the tradition of tinsmithing that um, unfortunately has also quite died out and there's very few remaining tinsmiths left in Ireland. So as you may know yourself, there's not a lot of visibility of travel culture in the school system at the moment. There is work being done in the background to include travel history and culture in the curriculum itself. But that is a bit longer down the road and not something that's going to happen overnight or even in the short term. If you want to include more travel pride and culture in the classroom, there's a few things that you can do. You can put displays up, you can share uh, cant or gammon words that showcase our language. You can show videos of flower making. A lot you can find on YouTube or I have some on my Instagram page as well. There's all these different aspects of things that you can be doing to showcase travel pride and culture. It's important to do this even if you don't have any travel children in your classroom, because it's not just about sharing travel pride and culture if you have a child in your classroom, but it's also making other children aware of the diversity that we have in our schools and in our country. A lot of travel children don't feel like they belong in the classroom. I know I didn't when I was growing up. I often felt like I was an afterthought and to be honest with you sometimes that was better because when I wasn't an afterthought I was actively bullied and discriminated against. Unfortunately that's still happening in this day and age. A lot of travel children that I have spoken to have talked about not feeling like they belong or the teacher not understanding them. Now, that's not always the teacher's fault because there's no central piece of information at the moment where you can go for guidance to find ways to include travel culture and history in our classrooms. 
you can actively normalize different cultures in your own classroom. Get to know who is in your classroom. I'm not saying pinpoint children and get them to talk about their own culture because that's not their responsibility. If their culture is normalized in the classroom, they may feel more open about discussing that culture and feeling part of the everyday school environment. And as I said, even if there's no child in your classroom who is a traveler, it's still important that you showcase travel culture and travel pride because you never know when a travel child might come into the classroom. But you're also showcasing the fact that travel culture is normal and it's something to be proud of. And so it's letting other children know as well that there's nothing wrong with being a traveler. And it's something that should be celebrated.